Are you doing? <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to come and find some different sized spanners. You'll get used to it. Special hours, welcome to Work Swamp and part 25 of the Austin 10 special wrap. Hope you're all good and have had a good week. Firstly, I'd like to welcome all the new subscribers and thanks to everyone who left a like and a comment last week. Nice one, keep them coming. Also, big thanks to everyone who went to the tip jar. Cheers, lads. Okay, so this week I'm going to start off by attacking Ian and sorting out this head gasket issue. One way or the other, I've got to get that sorted. While he's out, I'm going to have a look at the gearbox because I've made the remote linkage, but I can't get it into reverse without lifting the gear knob. Also, while he's out, I'm going to attack the welding which has got to be done where the exhaust comes through. Anyway, let's get on with it. So you're back on the bench Ian, get this sump off and have a look underneath. I don't want to take the head off really, I wanted there to be no water in that sump, you know what I mean? Right, this is really odd. No. All of these have gone rusty and the bolts. Why would it go rusty in that short amount of time? And I guess we'll wait on for tomorrow. Right, there you go, that's what it looks like. And that looks very much like to me is there the water it is right you can see just there where the water was getting through so it must have been coming out of this one here but hopefully that'll be it and i can just clean it up put a decent egg gasket on it and then maybe she'll be all right i think it is i think that's definitely what it is i don't think it's anything else but i'm going in now okay so i got all the engine off the deck and the head gasket right? Whereas the head gasket set looks exactly the same as the other one. I think what the problem was, me putting it together error. Because if you look on these, they've got a little red line round. Now this is some sort of adhesive or something, I don't know what it is. But what you do is you put the head on, torque it up, and then when you fire it up to start with, you fire it up with no water in. Well, I don't know how long you have to do it for, it's enough to get these warm. And then these will seal off. Now, when I first started in, we were having carb issues and it, it was revvy as you like, so it probably just blew these right out. But I'm going to take the time and put him on. That gasket set there was 12.93 plus that, 3.96 posters. And apparently it's made in Britain. So that appears to be what I did wrong, so all I've got to do is do it right on this one and it'll be all right. Aren't you, Ian? You just needed more love. Too many rules for my liking. These look pretty identical. It's got a slightly different pattern on it, so they aren't identical, but there's the red ceiling strip down there. So I reckon the rocker cover was all condensation, the water coming out being really hot, and then condensating in the rocker cover because it's going to go straight up and then cool down up there. But it feels a bit smoother now. It's nice and smooth. I guess we'll wait on for 
oil leak at the back was nothing to do with this gasket. I think it was more likely the fact that I left two of the bolts undone. the old circle thing. I got those UJs on, got the sir clip in one side, and then the other side just wouldn't go. It wouldn't push in far enough. I mean, I probably belted that. So I did the other one, and I got a skinny sir clip in. Not really happy with it. I've done loads of these UJs, and I've never had this much problem. I don't think you can get anything good anymore. I think everything's just a little bit, bit sketchy. And talking about sketchy, if you remember, I stripped down the starter motor and took the bushes out and took the brushes out now i found a company online auto electrical spares now it's a bigger website you know it's comprehensive it had all the bits and pieces i wanted on it so i thought great so i ordered it up so i waited for two weeks and then i gave them a ring nothing nothing at all so i started researching a bit more and i went on test pilot and this is what i see bad review after bad review so I went on to PayPal and I was able to cancel the order and get two thirds of the money back, which is great. But if you're looking for auto electrical parts, don't use them, they're a rip off. So I'm nipping out to the other side of Southampton to deliver this CD. I'm going to see a fella called Martin who won this CD. And apparently he's got an MX-5 out there. Now I'm interested in seeing it and having a bit of a chat with him because very shortly I'm going to be getting an MX-5 motor as a donor for the Morris 10 project. I'm also going to pop to Solent Bearings and see if I can't get a bearing for the star motor. Right, let's go. So on my travels I've stopped off. We've got three lamps of bright 8 mil, And this is going to do the brake rods. Cost 15 quid. So I'm going to go up to Solent Bearings and see if the man can't sort out the bearings for the start. Man. Hello, mate. What I need is one of those. Okay, yeah, top hat bush. Home and squeeze me, I'm a lover man. Love, love, love me like I know that you can. Right, okay, so that's not available in stock. So there you go, then. Got any bushes there? But he's ordered me one. Next. Right, so now I'm gonna drop the Jim Ammon CD off and then home. So I've arrived at Martin. Hi everyone. And we're going in his garage. Very shiny, sir. Yeah. It's your Turbski. Yeah. Oh, look at that. About 350 brake horsepower now. 350? Yeah. You're joking no. me. Uh, the engine's been fully forged, so we've got forged pistons, rods, um, ARP mains, and um, different bearings and stuff. This is last man. Drum, isn't it? Yeah. Sweet as a nut. Did you build the engine? Yeah. Is that what you do? Well, I'm a maintenance engineer. Oh, yeah. So, yes. yes. It sounds lovely, man. It's lovely. It's not too loud. Did um, you dyno it? 
Uh, it's been rolled uh, like uh, uh, mapped on the road. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, so I also built this little MX-5 for my little boy. He's one. So he had to have a, an MX-5 like his dad's. So had it painted the same colour as my car. No way. And made the wheels. They're made out of dog bowls. Are they the same wheels? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, here we go. I haven't seen one of them for years now. So that's an original 1977 SS50. That's mint, isn't it? Yeah. I, I just love the look of it. It's just yeah. cool. And the fact that the pedals. And the motors are great on them. Yeah. And it's then what's this? That's my Triumph Bonneville T100. Talon wheels front and back. Um, custom paintwork. I've had the seat custom made. Looks as though it's doing about 100 already, doesn't <laughs> yeah. it? Yeah, I love that. Monkey bike I built for my younger brother. Quite well, lovely, dude. Thanks for Cheers. showing us around. Good to meet you, mate. And uh, we we get together on yeah, the old we'll MX5. Yeah, yeah, we we'll do some bits together. Yeah, cool. Right. Nice See one, man. Love, love, love me like I know that you can. I love, love, love me like I know that you can. Yeah. Now I just got back, and I never dropped it off first nor last. But I did get to meet Martin, and he's a sound dude. And he's up for giving me a bit of a hand when I get the MX-5 for the Morris project. Anyway, let's get back on with it. Right, so this gear shifter, to get it in reverse, you have to lift it. So by the time you've remoted it, it's not gonna lift. So I'm gonna open them up and have a look to see what is making you have to lift that. What is the obstruction? I don't really wanna take this gearbox apart after the last one was an absolute nightmare but I want to have a look in here and see what he says okay so what it appears to be is that little notch there if I can get that notch out of there then I can put the notch at this end the last time I took one of these out was an absolute nightmare so all right so to get this out I've got to knock that roll pin out and I'm hoping I've took the back off a little bit I'm hoping that's just gonna fall out there I can't remember but they're a bit of a pain these gearboxes Right, I've had to take the clutch fork out so I could tap this shaft out and as you can see the shaft's there ready came out a bit easier and now there's the piece now what I've got to do grind across that down down by about 8 mil by the look of it there you go this sits all the way down there so you don't have to lift it that last bit is what we're after put the gearbox back together again and a bit had fell out so I've ended up taking it all to bits again but interestingly enough Right, so that's the original one. If you're going to do this on your Reliant gearbox, there's a little piece you have to take out. Now I've just got to put this last piece in, and then hopefully that will all be good. Okay, the reason I took that gearbox right to bits is I found this in the bottom. Now I thought this can't be good, so I spent all day stripping it down and putting it back together again. But what it turns out it is, is one of these ball bearing holders. And what these do is they just slip underneath and act as a bearing. But obviously if it's broke like that, it ain't no good. So I think it was probably worth doing. Now, all I've got to do is this end. Okay, here's the bottom. Now, I cut this off when I first put it in. Now, what I'm going to do is extend it 
so it's just a little bit higher than this. Then, it's a lot out of here, I have to lift it to get it up onto there. I'll wear a little bit on here first. I'm going to do a temporary first, see how I get on. Right, what I've done is I've welded this little bit on the bottom. The piece I've welded on is a little bit longer, so it should hit the alley. That, hopefully, is marking neutral. First and second. Right. Oh, is that neutral right back there? What I need to do is make this now so it's exactly the same size, and then just bolt a little bit of alley on here and see what that does. Okay, the idea appears to be working, so I'm going to take off this little temporary bit and put a proper piece on here, weld it on properly. Right, here you go. So you got first, second, third and fourth. There's no way of getting over to reverse. And then you lift it, and there's reverse. That's the gate of fourth, and then you go across it there. That's banging, man. Well, hopefully that gearbox is going to be good now, because I've put back in the bits that were missing. And this works absolutely bang on. speedo comes out and that just shoot up round here somewhere I do right I've got to get on with the welding
you go. So I filled that all in. I put this curved piece of 3mm around. And the same that side. It's got finished welding from underneath. But that's the sort of idea. And it puts the strength back into this piece here where the exhaust comes through and it gives me a little drop as well. So that's a good job out of the way. There's plenty of these little jobs that need doing. Okay, on to the tip jar. Massive thanks to these guys this week. Liam Street, Vincent Glenn, Cole Liggett, Roger Davies, Chris Blade, AKA Randy Man, Amos Cotardi, Chris Unsworth. Well, those dudes have made it up onto the old wardrobe. Now, next week, I'm gonna get sassed with the air rifle to take a bit of a pot shot, and whatever name she hits will win the very first Oak Swamp t-shirt. Now I'm going to be bringing a few shirts out later on, you know what I mean, if you dudes want to get one, I'm going to come up with some designs and all that. But the very first one is going to one of these dudes, so make sure you tune in next week if you've been to the tip jar. When I played double bass for a living, I used to go busking and people used to chuck us a quid. Only if they wanted it, if they liked the music, they'd bang us a couple of quid. And I kind of see tip jar like that. If you like the video, I put loads of hours into it. If you like the video, bung us a couple of quid. Now, if you ain't got a couple of quid, what you could do for me would be really great. Would be please share this with one other person. Share my channel with one other person. And let's see what that does, because YouTube are the people I really want to be getting the dosh off. <laughs> So my mate Shane's dropped round. Hello mate. He's dropped me off a metric tap and die set which I'm going to need very shortly. Sasha's out doing the car again. Hello. Look at that. Wow. It's all in there. You're getting up in the world aren't you? I'll open this silencer up, see what packing it's got inside it. You didn't think I was going to leave it that quiet, did you? Oh, there's a fair old bit of wadding in there, look. And that's completely hollow now. Now what I think I'm going to do, just to liven them up a bit, I'm going to cut a bit off the end and just put a piece on the ends and then it won't leak here through this piece. All I've got left to do is to wrap this in the exhaust tape and that keep the heat down. Alright, well that's about it for this week lads I'm afraid, but I hope you join me next week. If you're not subscribed, make sure you do. Please leave me a like, a comment. And if you can afford it, bung me a couple of quid in the tip jar. And I'm going to be putting this pile of bits together and trying to have a go. Catch you dudes next time. Hang loose. Before we go any further, I just want to ask everyone something. If they can this week, get your knobs out and wiggle them around. See a little silhouette of a man's camera moves. You know, wiggle them, let everyone see them wiggling.